Jennifer Dubowski, and I am a licensed acupuncturist in Chicago. I am here today with Mel Hopper Koppelman, who is the director of Evidence Based Acupuncture. Now, you may not know her, but in the field of acupuncture, she is internationally well known. So I am very happy to have her here to talk with me. And the other special thing is generally most of her talks and her research articles are geared toward people in the acupuncture field. And I have convinced her to just give a few little tips of wisdom to the general public about how acupuncture works and some really important research. So Mel, why don't you take it away? Thank you very much and thank you so much for, for having me. And, uh, and I love this opportunity to speak to, to the public, to you, to, to patients or just to people who have, may have a certain health issue or may just want to stay well and want to understand a little bit more about the, the scientific evidence or the research around acupuncture. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of mystery around it. So yes. it's, uh, it's a, a practice that's very old and sometimes can seem a little mysterious and a little bit culty even. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So people, on the one hand, um, you know, we know that people are go coming for acupuncture in increasing numbers based on research all over the world. So it's increasing in popularity, and I think that's mainly from word of mouth because, you know, acupuncturists get good results. Yes. But on the other hand, people want to to feel like they're making um, an informed and reasonable decision in going for acupuncture. So I thought it would be helpful to perhaps discuss this from two different sides. So okay. one is the evidence for acupuncture for different conditions. Um, so if, you know, different conditions being anything to do with pain, like low back pain or uh, arthritis of the knee pain, migraine, headache, anything like that. We also treat fertility issues, um, hormone imbalances, um, digestive issues, and so knowing what the evidence is there. And then on the other hand, how does it work, right? Because Right, and I'm how sure. do we treat all of these issues? Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, how is it that we can treat so many different things using our tools? So um, one thing that I think is helpful to know is that um, there was a recent review of the scientific literature for acupuncture for all the different conditions for which it has evidence. So the, the first review was done by the Australian Veterans Association. So okay. the Australian Veterans Association has all these uh, war vets, and they wanted to know what is the, what is the evidence for this practice? Is it worth us, uh, you know, giving this to our vets? Yes. And this review was updated by the American Veterans Association. So with the same question, we've got all these vets are in VA hospitals, they're in clinics. Um, we've heard good things, but what does the literature say? And then uh, it was even uh, recently again, just last year, updated. So, so as recent as the end of 2017, we've got this review of all of the literature for acupuncture. And what they found is that there was um, sort of evidence is ranked in terms of levels of how high the evidence is. And there was top level evidence for 117 different conditions, which is randomized controlled trials, which is how, um, how, how researchers study most of medicine. So you're, let me just clarify that really quick. Yeah. What you're saying is there was a huge review of a bunch of legitimate research studies done as recently as 2017, yeah. and they found that there were 117 conditions that acupuncture was helpful for. Yeah, it was 117 conditions for which there was top grade evidence um, okay. of, of, of different levels. And so the, for um, the two highest levels, so there was like, you know, moderate uh, evidence that it was effective uh -huh. and, and very high evidence that it was effective was for 46 different conditions. So okay. and they were diverse, so they included different types of pain, stroke rehab, digestive issues, anxiety, depression, um, just a lot of different things. And, and, um, and in fact, on our website, which is evidencebasedacupuncture.org, we have um, a recent review where we, we look at that and we have we've created an image where you can see what those conditions are. So we can summarize that by saying that there are a lot of different conditions that there is very high level evidence 
the acupuncture is yes. effective. And at the same time, if we look at the conventional treatments for those same conditions, often the evidence for those commonly used treatments is very low, which a lot of people don't realize. So for example, when we look at acupuncture for different pain conditions mm -hmm. um, and we say, oh, but does acupuncture work? And we sometimes are assuming that the other things that you would normally get w do work. Right. Uh, but it's been shown that Tylenol, or which is paracetamol, depending on where you are, for, uh, for low back pain and, and oste osteoarthritis in the knee, there's no evidence that it has a clinical effect. Mm -hmm which is interesting because it's the most commonly prescribed uh, and taken drug on the planet. Um, and, and at the same time, there was a review that actually showed that it was more dangerous than people, than we realized until recently. So using a very large data set, um, it was found that it, it was causing liver damage and it was increasing people's risk of heart attack and death and that sort of thing. So it's helpful for us to look at, you know, not just what's the evidence for acupuncture, but in the context of our choices, but the decision right. to make, what are the other options and where, right. does, where does it rank? So, so I encourage anyone watching, if they want to know what that list is, it's easy to find um, on, our, on our website and other places. So there's a lot of different conditions that acupuncture has been shown to treat. Right. Um, and, and then we'll include that link. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Here. And um, the other thing I just want to make sure everyone knows is the entire paper is referenced with the research studies. Thank you. Yeah, so we, you know, everything is referenced, um, good quality references, particularly around safety and, and evidence-based for, for conventional, mm -hmm. conventional things. Um, and so then, so a lot of times the next question is, well then how, do, how does it work, right? right. Now, what how does it, it happen? Yeah, what makes it happen and how is what it possible? What makes the acupuncture magic happen? That's right, how <laughs> is this magic <laughs> happening? Um, so, so, okay. So, yeah. So that and that's and that's a reasonable question. You know, I, I think mm -hmm. it, it's it's really uh, if, you know if we it, you know I can imagine back to before I became an acupuncturist mm -hmm. and before I went for acupuncture, that how can tiny needles help everything from migraines to fertility to oh yeah, pain. Um, and it's it's interesting. There's been uh, a lot of research into acupuncture in you know in the West and in China, but you know pretty much globally. Um, over the last 60 years. And, and actually, um, a recent report from MIT joining up with IBM found that research into acupuncture is growing at twice the rate of, of conventional research, which is I interesting. I love it. So there's just more and more research being going, right. going into it, both, both what, what is it mm -hmm. helpful for and how does it work. And so there's an, a number of things that we know are going on at the same time with acupuncture. So First, we can look at our, our nervous system, which is our brain and our nerves. And we know that acupuncture is having a direct effect on nerves where we're placing the needle, which is a very tiny, okay. teeny tiny needle um, that is activating certain teeny tiny nerve fibers that are relaying a signal to, you know, through the spinal cord to the brain and that there's um, a direct impact where the needle goes in, but also there's this uh, communication that happens in the brain, and it's um, shown to to in improve the regulation of the brain, which is a, always a good thing. So, yes. um, whereas sometimes conventionally uh, with, with medications and drugs, are trying to turn something up or turn something down, and it's a little bit non-specific. Um, we are we're modulating, so we're in, we're helping um, helping the brain and the body work better, particularly um, where reducing activation in the parts of the brain that are associated with like stress and negative emotions and um, you know being almost upset by things like pain and, and things like that and also um, there's a very specific pathway that goes from the brain um, to our adrenal glands into our uh, thyroid into our reproductive system which is our you know our whole hormonal system and acupuncture improves the regulation of that and so sometimes I almost just I will describe it to patients a bit like restarting your computer rebooting where yeah, like that. things work a little bit better um, and one thing I will share with patients even though it might sound technical but I think it's a helpful thing to be aware of and many people these days are um, is that we have 
two parts of our, our autonomic, our automatic nervous system, um, which is the fight or flight and the rest and digest. So the fight or flight is like we, we've got that stress response, we've seen the tiger, and now our whole body needs to change so we can run away from the tiger. Right. Um, and then the rest and digest, if we're kind of feeling good, we're, we're, we're relaxed, uh, we're re repairing, and things are going well. And so many of us are just, con you know, that, that sympathetic, that, um, that, uh, fight or flight part of our nervous system is really uh, designed to be used sparingly, but most of us are using it all the time. And acupuncture has been shown to bring that into balance so that it's going to turn up the feeling groovy part of the nervous system and the relaxed part of the nervous system and, and turn down that fight or flight. And, you know, people you, you just often immediately feel very relaxed when yes. they have it. So that's, um, you know, in, in, I guess the, the, the last part of the nervous system effects of acupuncture that I'll mention is, the, is that we know that um, when we needle certain points that we learn um, when we're traditionally trained is that it's affecting certain spinal reflexes. So that can be both to interrupt pain, but also to regulate um, blood flow to the internal organs. And those have been mapped. So there's not you know, it's, it's no longer mysterious or woo-woo that we can use a point How on. was it mapped? Was it mapped with um, it was MRI using or? rats. <laughs> that's, how they, that's how it started. I mean, it, some of it's been done in humans as well, particularly okay. in the cardiovascular system, but is uh, Japanese researchers, they did very meticulous studies and we can show that certain points that we use, for example, for digestive function will increase blood flow to the stomach. Um, okay. And, that, and that's not even particularly recent research so the bottom line there is that even though at first glance it can seem strange that we're using a point in the foot for your migraine we know that nerves communicate from a distance right. and that um we've ma we've mapped these pathways so um so that's how we're using the nervous system and then we also know um that when we do acupuncture needling there's a lot of biochemical changes that yeah. we've again measured a lot of these and even changes in gene transfer so a lot of us are aware about really? that's genetics. Cool. It's really cool. Um, and, and actually, when you mentioned adenosine, this is an area that I'm very interested in, which is you know, a little bit technical, but um, it's that's using the body's main energy system. Um, we now know that acupuncture is really using this this pathway, but the way that it's changing genes is that um, it's you know it's releasing a chemical that turns genes on and turns genes off. Um, so, and that's so interesting because they have, or from what I have read, there's been a lot of talk of you may have a gene for some disease, but for some people it gets turned on and some people it doesn't. And they're not sure why. So if acupuncture can help affect that, that's, huge absolutely um so we you know i think again we're becoming you know a lot of people are more and more aware of their health we get very interested in, in research and so we talk a lot about epigenetics um which is how genes get turned on or turned off and there's another word that's becoming uh, more popular which i think is a helpful concept which is called the exposome so you've got the genome but the exposome is like the sum total of your genes but also all of your environment and experiences and nutrition oh, okay. and stress. And the sum total of that is what's turned on or turned off, if you like. So it's kind of looking at everything. Um, and so we know that um, for, you know, unless someone has an actual genetic illness, which happens, but is very rare, um, for most people, genes are going to play a smaller part in their overall health. So genes, mm -hmm. for most people are going to play about a 10 to 15% part of the picture of their overall health, which means that it's, you know, significant enough to make a difference, but isn't, you know, there's so much else that they can do to right. impact their health. And the way that, the way that acupuncture works to, um, to turn on and off genes is again through improved self-regulation. So we're not going in going, oh, I think that, that gene's a little bit annoying. Let's turn that one right. off. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not how we evolved, you know, we yeah. evolved to, um, you know, to understand what was going on in our environment and then change everything at once, really. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, and so we can do that, we can do that with acupuncture as well. But, but in terms of the, the chemicals that acupuncture changes, um, we're releasing anti-inflammatory chemicals for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're releasing um, 
just pain relieving chemicals, we're releasing chemicals that um, improve the cardiovascular system and all sorts of things like that. And this has been demonstrated in animal studies and human studies and more than one study. So, um, you know, it's quite funny. People ask how it works. Well, I mentioned Tylenol um, a moment ago. So in the last year, you know, that large study came out showing that it really wasn't effective for pain. And it was also shown to be more dangerous than we realized, but the authors also said, and we don't know how it works, <laughs> which is quite amusing because it doesn't I work. I love that. I love that. Because yeah, so if it's, and no one cares if Tylenol says that. Right. Because, it's <laughs> because, you know, we've been using it so long and we just assume, well, it's a chemical. It's like, well, there are a lot of chemicals. We don't want to ingest a lot of them. Um, but, you know, so we, we certainly know a lot more about how acupuncture works than many conventional med uh, medications. And we also know these multiple pathways. So... Whereas a chemical, a chemical, a drug or medication is usually um, inhibiting something or turning up something in the in a in a pathway, right. but unfortunately, because our bodies are networks of of, of biochemistry, it's not just you know, right. A to B to C to D. It's right. like it's like the whole it's this whole network. But it's so, a freeway, not one street. It's a freeway, not one street. It, well, it's, it's like a it's like the whole grid, you know. Yeah. Um, it's like you, you have these nodes. So um, so when you take a medication that blocks something, there's always going to be other effects. They, they tend to be called side effects, but they're just effects. Um, but whereas acupuncture is a very mild stimulus. Um, that helps that it helps the body um, have a positive adjustment and does all of, you know has all these different effects that we know of, which is really really cool. Yeah, I well clearly I'm prejudiced. I love acupuncture. If you were to give the public one simple takeaway that you would like them to know about acupuncture, what would that be? That's a fantastic question. Um, I would say that I, I understand that it, it can be really confusing to make good decisions mm -hmm. about healthcare. There's so much information available and it's really hard to know what is trustworthy and what is not. And one thing that I feel very passionate about is that if you have a, a health issue or, um, or something that you want to improve with your, your energy or your mood or something like that, I feel very passionate that people start with a treatment that has the best benefit to harm ratio so that it's, mm -hmm. that it's shown to work and that it's safe and to only do more invasive uh, and potentially more dangerous things if they need to, if that doesn't work. And, and of course, I'm here, I'm talk not talking about emergency situations. I'm talking right. about everyday chronic things. So, you know, for example, um, so many people have, let's say, arthritis or, or this kind of dysfunctions. You know, it's really, uh, I find it upsetting that people might start with surgery, which, um, you know, depending on the condition, does not have very good outcomes. It's invasive, it's expensive, it's painful before trying um, something like acupuncture, which has good evidence that it might help. Yeah. And you know what? If, if it doesn't work for you, you can always still have yeah, you surgery. You can still get someone to do surgery. You can, st you can still do it. And sometimes, you know, and, and I'm not saying that surgery is never indicated or never helped. But I think that that's I think that that's more helpful thinking for us. That if we start with something less invasive, that's safer, that's been shown to work, and also, I think the other thing that a lot of people might not be aware of until they're seeing an acupuncturist is that because you know we have a lot of training. It's not just acupuncture, and it's not just needles. Um, you know, we are taking detailed health histories and cases, yes. we can often spend more time with you than um, the short visit at a doctor, which is in some ways a big part of how we can help, right? Mm -hmm. There's, you know, an hour is better than 10 minutes you know, to, yes. really, to get to understand how things are fitting together. And um, we've, you know, we've been trained in, uh, in, 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 a, in a lot of aspects of conventional, um, you know, anatomy and physiology. So it's not, it's not just this other weird system, right. but we're, we're trained in both. So there can be a lot of benefit just from having a practitioner near you, you know, that you have that relationship with who can really listen to you and sometimes just give you really helpful advice, you know, over and above the treatment. So um, I think that's the other thing to bear in mind is that it's, yes. um, it's, it's a package of care. That, that um, I agree. And you know what? I think let's just state it. A lot of people don't realize in order to practice, you need to get a four-year master's degree in Chinese medicine, not to mention that we're doing CEUs, not to mention that hopefully people are doing other research. So 
people who are practicing acupuncture have a lot of experience. Yeah. So I think that a lot of people, so I've actually had people ask me, um, oh, did you have to go to school for that? <laughs> um, yes, I did. So I think that's important. How do you find a good acupuncturist in your area? Fantastic. So um, it's going to depend a little bit on where you live. Um, if you live in the United States, then you're going to want to look at the organization for acupuncturists in your state. Most, in, in most states, acupuncturists are licensed medical professions, professionals. Um, and as you said, they need a you know, four year masters, but they are licensed medical professionals. Yes. So that's where you want to look. Um, in, in other countries, it's similar. So they may, may not be licensed, but in many countries, such as in Europe um, mm -hmm. or even Australasia, um, there's going to be a register and, and, and for an acupuncturist to join um, any of those organizations, they'll have to have the same level of, uh, of training and experience that they would to be licensed in, in another country. So you want to look at those registers. And in some countries, there are um, there are kind of different standards so that mm -hmm. sometimes a, a practitioner could join with less training. And I, I think, it's, generally speaking, it's usually best to go to look at the organization yes. that has the most training. Um, it usually, it's, it's a certain level of rigor. It usually means that they're gonna have more training in things like mm -hmm. red flags, um, understanding your medication, and, and the kind of conventional side of things as well. And it's just, it, you know, in terms of seeing that trusted healthcare professional, I think it's just a good idea. So that's usually pretty yes. easy to find. And I would add one more thing to that is in the United States, the, okay, it's a long title here, National Certification Commission on Oriental Medicine, on Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine, they have a website, nccaom.org, I will include the link, but that is for all acupuncturists who, after finishing school, passed a national exam, and you can go there look up by state, even by zip code, to find qualified people near you. So that's one more resource I Definitely. like to include. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mel. And I really hope that people enjoy this. And if they have any questions, that they will post them in the comments below. And uh, thanks again. It was lovely. Thank you.